Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We are in 2 Kings chapter 2. We're going to get back to, this is actually part 3, but we're going to get back to actually going now through the entire chapter. The reason why I took a little excursion uh, um, um, here is that um, it talks about the very spectacular way that Elijah exits the earth. God takes him, right? And what's kind of fascinating is that some 800 years later, we see Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. That in itself is a lot of some some some. I may do some other videos on that because that's just amazing, especially when we when we think about life and death. Or what happens to us when we die? Uh, this story here with Elijah is that one he he's taken and is never seen again. Um, so what what is assumed is that his body never died. I I personally don't believe that. What is fascinating again, 800 years after that event, he shows up on the Mount uh, Transfiguration. Now here's the interesting. What did you see? Again, that's just enough of that because I could go on for this. Like I say, this would be worth something of, of a separate video apart from, of course, I threw the Bible. But it's fascinating because you think about it. it this, this gives us some glimpse. That's all it's meant to do. It gives us some glimpse. We don't have a lot of detail. That's why uh, I'm tearing myself away from really trying to get into a lot of the details but let's get back to the chapter second Kings chapter 2 I'm gonna go back to verse 1 and start there um, second Kings chapter 2 verse 1 says the time came had come for the Lord it <clears throat> the time had come for the Lord to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind and Elijah and Elijah were traveling from Gilgal Gal, Gal, Gal. And Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, the Lord is sending me to Bethel. And then tell you, we don't, again, this is just sort of a kind of a brief, like I said, not details, right? This is brief, because we don't know why the Lord is telling them to sit here. But I don't even, I'm not even for sure why Elijah is telling Elisha to stay there. But Elijah replied, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then the sons of the prophet who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said, Do you Elisha and said, Do you do you know that the Lord would take your master away from you today? He said, Yes, I know. Be quiet. Now <clears throat> remember verse one, kinda of go back when he said the time had come for the Lord uh, to take Elijah up to heaven. So this was common revelation, is what I'm saying right here. Elijah knew it. Elijah knew it. Elijah knew it. And now these sons of the prophet who were at Bethel, they say it. Right? So verse 4, Elijah said to them, Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as you, you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. Now, um, Elijah's not even actually putting up a fuss either. In other words, Elisha is not putting, saying, I told you to stay here, man. Stay here, right? Uh, <laughs> um, again, there's so much to this chapter if you all can see how I am struggling not to really get into it. That Elijah at this point doesn't seem to be carefree about anything. Because he knows he's getting ready to be taken. Now think about that for a minute. That he knows he's getting ready to be taken. Think how much... Think how, think how we fear death. And you think about... He, getting, he knows I'm getting ready to go. Alright, verse 5. Then the sons of the prophet who were at who were in Jericho came up to Elisha and said, "Do you not know that the Lord will take away take your master away from you today?" He said, "Yes, I know. Be quiet." Yeah, in other words, shut up. Yeah, I know. 
So again, all of these properties, this revelation here is noted. This this is a very spectacular thing. And notice God is letting he had revealed this to all the prophets. <coughs> and I'm going to say all of the true prophets. Okay. Verse 6, Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord is sending me to Jordan. But Elijah said, If the Lord lives as you, as you yourself lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty, son, fifty men from the sons of the prophets came and stood facing them from a distance while the two of them stood at the Jordan. Verse 8, Elijah took his manna, rolled it up, and, tuck, and struck the waters which parted to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Now this is a smaller version of the Red Sea miracle, right? So on the one hand, you have the the Jordan rivers wherever this crossing here, that it parts, but then it also miraculously dries, and then they walked over. Verse nine. After they crossed over, Elisha said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do, you, do to you before I am taken from you. Now that's, again, so we think about the, his attitude here. Like, I'm getting ready to go. Not, he's fearful. Right? That That's kind of, to me, the most amazing thing here. He's not fearful. So he says, now, what can I do, what can I do for you? before I'm taken away. So Elijah answered, please let me inherit two shares of your spirit. Now, we, we will see this later on. In doing this here, we see that Elijah does seven miracles. Elisha would do 14. Verse 10, Elijah replied, you have asked for something difficult. If you see me being taken from you, then you will have it. If not, you won't. Now, again, don't have a lot of detail to this. Like, my question would be, why is that difficult exactly? You know. And, but anyway, he said, if you see me, verse 11, as they continue walking, a chariot of fire with the horses of fire suddenly appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went up into heaven in the whirlwind. And as Elijah watched, he, he kept crying out, my father, my father. Uh, the chariots and horsemen of Israel, and he never saw Elijah again. Now, spectacular. Dove into it a little bit last in the last study. So as they're walking, all of a sudden in the sky appears this chariot of fire, horses and chariots of fire. We could say no doubt some kind of angelic beings come and they take him. Even the horses, right, seem to be kind of interesting here. Like I say, I, I'm so not trying to delve into this, but there is, this is just, it begs for questions here, right? So if they see horses, does that mean that there are animals in heaven or in the spirit realm? Like in this case, what, what kind of horses are they seeing? Because this is a kind of a real-time event here. In other words, this is not a dream that everybody is seeing. In other words, so this actually happened. So that, for example, when Gabriel, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, he was actually Gabriel appearing to him, you know what? but in a dream. So again, yeah, it's a question. Where is this? Is this, are there angels in heaven? Now, people ask all the time, about their pets. Now, I, 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 there is not, there is no scripture that supports that your pets go to heaven. That when animals die, they just said they return to the earth. That's it. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to say is that there's no scripture to support it. Now, if you want to believe that Fluffy is in heaven, fine. But you know, is in heaven. Okay. And, and again, I, I would say, look, there's there's no scripture that, from what I can see, that just doesn't even deal with the subject at all. In other words, there's just no... <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. There was no... There was no 
subject here. There was no scripture that just deals with that. I oh, apologize for the sneeze here. Anyway, um, yeah, but there's no, but there's no, no, you know, you just don't have it, right? Um, so if you wanted, if someone wanted to say, well, the Bible doesn't deal with it, so it's possible that my fluffy could be in heaven. Sure. Then that can open a whole lot of <laughs> that can open uh, uh, it can open a whole lot of other questions. So if 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 all of a sudden because your your animals like dogs and all that kind of stuff use it, they live shorter lifespans than we do. Some animals a little longer, but especially dogs, right? And 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 forgive me because I'm not an animal lover, so I really know nothing about dogs and stuff or cats. But if they do die, right? If they do die before you, are they waiting for you in heaven? I mean, so my point is you can just open up a whole lot of questions by that. We're not going to get into it because, again, the Bible doesn't deal with it. But what is interesting here, and what I am saying, that if you wanted to make some kind of case, um, then here, this is this is something in the sense of what exactly did they see? Verse 11 again, as they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire with horses of fire suddenly appeared. So these horses certainly wasn't pulled from the stable, right? Uh, these horses came from the spiritual realm and picked Elijah up. So they picked him up and, it, and, and, he, and he went into the heaven into, the, into a whirlwind. Now, as I said before, I do not believe that Elijah... Um, I do not believe that Elijah uh, lived... I'm going to say both Elijah and Enoch. I believe that they did experience death and in that their bodies, okay that their spirits are separated from their bodies. Okay? Um, and, like I say, it's not worth to get into the debate over, but it's just a fascinating story right here. It, what, what this shows here. It also shows us the futility of life, the physical life. It shows us the eternal life aspect. Here, Elijah is taken away, and as I said, 800 years from this, we see him again. 800 years, we see him again at the Mount of Transfiguration. So, this should that should put some perspective in our life, especially when it comes to the fear of death. And we only can walk by faith in this area, okay? We can only walk by faith here. So this happens happened twice. That's actually I said three times. One with the ascension of Jesus. Um, of course, Jesus being God in the flesh, and then his flesh was glorified. But here we see Elijah and then the story of Enoch. Um, Moses disappeared on the mountain and it was declared to be have died. In fact, not only did Moses was declared to have died, but that um, Satan and the Michael Archangel fought over his body. We were told that in the book of Jude. Um, but um, with Enoch and Elijah here, they God took them. So. Um, again, this is so fascinating that God takes them, but this gives us, and it should give us, an eternal perspective here. All right. So it's at verse 12, and as Elijah watched, he kept crying out, "My father, my father!" The chariots, the horsemen, the vitro. Then he never saw Elijah again, and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. Now. It's going to go on. Elijah is now assumed the mantle of Elijah. He, he become sort of the, the head number one prophet. 
Verse 13, Elijah picked up the mantle that had fallen off of Elijah and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Stop for a minute, because I just, just had a thought right here. And again, I'm not going to go further than this, but just notice the mantle fell off of Elijah. Think about that for a moment. The, the mantle fell. In other words, he didn't take the mantle with him into the whirlwind. Okay, just saying. I can say this chapter here, I could just go on and on. As you can see, I'm really fighting not to do this here. Verse 14. <laughs> then he took the mantle Elijah had dropped and struck the waters. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? He asked, and he struck the waters himself, and they parted to the right and to the left, and, Eli and Elijah crossed over. Um, and when the sons of the prophets from Jericho who were facing him saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed down to the ground in front of him. Now this is not a, a diatribe uh, in this sense, but in the sense they see they no what, what they what you see is God confirming Elijah as Elijah um, Elijah's uh, successor um, verse 16 then the sons of the prophet said to Elijah since there are 50 strong men here with your servant please let them go and search for your master maybe the spirit of the Lord has carried him away and put him on a mount, put him on one of the mountains, or into one of the valleys. I think the King James says, "Cast him on there." I kind of, kind of the King, old King James says, "Cast him." Um, verse seven, he said, he answered, "Don't send them." However, they urged him to the point of embarrassment. So he said, "Send them." They sent fifty men who looked for three days but did not find him. And when they returned him to Jericho, where he was staying, he said to them, "Did I not tell you not to go?" Right. So in other words. They sat there and said, hey, look, you know, let's go find him. Maybe he got put on, you know. Anyway, it, but now it, this kind of like is sobering because it brings us back to human frailty. On the one hand, they watched the God take Elijah. They, they see the mantle transferred to Elisha, but then they don't really believe him. All right, verse 19. And the men of the city said to Elijah, Even though our Lord can see that this that the city's location is good, the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful. He replied, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. After they had brought him one, Elijah went out to the spring of water, threw salt in it, and he said, This is what the Lord says, I have healed this water. No longer will death be will death or unfruitfulness result from it. So the water was contaminated and then Elijah heals it or purifies the water. Um, the people of Jackson could, and Flint, Michigan could certainly use Elijah, couldn't they? I, poor joke. Verse 22. Therefore the water remains healthy to this very day according to the word that Elijah spoke. Now this also kind of established Elijah as Elijah's predecessor, I mean successor, verse 23. From there Elijah went to Beth, went up to Beth, and as he was walking up the path, some small boys came out of the city and harassed him, chanting, Go up, Baldy, go up, Baldy. He turned around, looked at him, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two female bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the children. And from there Elijah went to Mount Carmel, and then he returned to Samaria. Yes, this is kind of an interesting story here, right? Now, when it says the boys, it's believed that these boys are somewhere around the neighborhood in the teenage years. Now, I don't like to sugarcoat these kinds of stories here. When it says right here, they came out and harassed him it says, go up baldy baldy and by the way this kind of gives us a kind of look that uh elijah was bald okay <laughs> didn't have a full full of hair okay but anyway they started teething him and then he turned and looked at him and cursed him now some people will use this as don't touch god's anointing and look what would happen now i'm saying 
certainly this happened here. But a lot of these jack leg prophets and pastors who are, that try to use this verse doesn't apply to them. Okay, uh, I criticize them all day long because you're not a true prophet. Another thing is that I don't. Some people, Bible critics, will may may try to. Um, say well why would he turn why would he turn on that and I'm going to think that's not the point the Bible doesn't give us any answers we don't know they shouldn't have done it and when they did it they got mauled they got mauled okay alright guys um, we're going to get to chapter 3 in the next study but again chapter 2 was a fascinating study and then we kind of and then we, we, the mantle of the prophet passes from Elijah, Elijah to Elijah in a very most spectacular way. Yes, a, mo a very spectacular way. All right, guys. Look, don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. Hit that subscribe button you see there. And I uh, welcome all of your comments. I will see you in the next study.